welcome to epg patshala dear students today we are going to discuss on calorific value of a fuel calorific value is the amount of heat or energy generated while heating unit mass of the fuel under ideal condition it gives the measure of the heat or energy content in a fuel in fuel the va it varies with the fuel for example the coal diesel petrol etc have different cv calorific value and within the coal it also varies calorific value are of two types gross calorific value and net calorific value the gross calorific value is the total amount of heat assuming that is generated assuming that the all the vapor is get condensed while net calorific value is the amount of heat assuming that the water produced is not condensed we will use the bohm calorimeter to measure this calorific value in this module we are going to discuss on what is a calorific value what are the units used for this how to measure calorific value using bohm calorimeter what are the parts of bohm calorimeter and what are the procedures used for this calculation for procedures used in the um, estimation of uh, calorific value we will also see how to estimate or how to calculate calorific value we will see the calorific value estimation on dry weight basis also we will see what is the effect of moisture on this heat heating value we will see or we will learn how to calculate or how to make the stoichiometric formula how to uh, calculate the weight of water formed during combustion and also the low heating value with respect to the heat and dry ash basis let's starts with calorific value it is also known as heat of combustion or heating value it is the heat liberated by a unit mass of a fuel sample when burnt or oxidized under ideal combustion condition that is in presence of sufficient oxygen in a closed chamber of constant volume this is the heat liberated by the combustion of all carbon and hydrogen with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water it also includes the heat liberated by the oxidation of other elements such as sulfur which are present in the sample so this calorific value is the measurement of heat or the energy produced and is measured either as gross calorific value or net calorific value what are the units of this calorific value in the cgs system the calories per kilogram or calories per gram is used in fps system it is british thermal units that is btu per pound and in sa unit it is joule per gram or mega joule per kilogram cal in 1 uh, kg 1 calorie per gram is equivalent to 4.1868 joule per gram or 4.1868 kilojoule per kilogram one british thermal unit is equal to 252 calories so one btu which is equal to that is one british thermal unit is equal to 252 calories which is equal to 0.252 kilo calories and 1 kilo calories is equal to 3.968 btu you can use this conversion factor to convert btu to calories and calories to btu now we will see how this gross calorific value and net calorific value differ gross calorific value assumes all the vapor produced during the combustion process is fully condensed that is it is the total amount of heat produced when unit mass or volume of the fuel has been burned completely and the products of combustion have been cooled to room temperature it is the net heat produced when unit mass or volume of the fuel is burned completely and the products are permitted to escape but in net calorific value that is abbreviated as ncv assumes that the water leaves with the combustion products without fully being condensed mainly the fuels are compared based on the net calorific value rather than the gcv what are the factors affecting this calorific value it varies with the substrate or the fuel sample the calorific value of sample varies that is from one coal sample to another depending on ash ash content moisture content and type of the coal the calorific value of fuel oils are more or less consistent the biomass such as agricultural crop residue fuel wood agro industrial waste are hygroscopic in nature and absorb moisture depending on the relative humidity of the atmosphere so their calorific value varies 
and it is a function of the moisture content of the fuel. This table shows the gross calorific value of common liquid fuels. Kerosene, it is 11,100 kilocalories per kilogram. Diesel oil, it is 10,800 kilocalories per gram. Light diesel oil, it is 10,700 kilocalories per gram. Furnace oil, it is 10,500. The low sulfur heavy stock oil is 10,600. This is the gross calorific oil value. So, the calorific value is measured by means of bohm calorimeter. Let us see what are the parts of a bohm calorimeter. It consists of bohm or vessel in which the fuel is burnt, a bucket or container for holding the bohm in a measured unit of water or other absorbing media together with a stirring mechanism, an insulating jacket to protect the bucket from transient thermal stresses during the combustion process and a thermometer or other sensor for measuring temperature change within the bucket. So, this bomb is a strong thick walled metal vessel and the sample is inserted in it and combustion undergoes the. The bomb completely is submerged in the water which is present in the bucket with a probe to read the temperature and a stirrer to promote rapid thermal equilibrium without introducing excessive heat in the form of mechanical energy. These buckets are commonly made up of highly polished outer finish. This is made with highly polished outer finish to minimize the absorption and emission of radiant heat. Valves are provided for filling the bomb with oxygen under pressure and for releasing residual gases at the completion of experiment. Electrodes to carry an ignition current to a fuse wire is also required. Since the internal pressure up to 100 kg per centimeter square can be developed during combustion in most of these bombs are constructed to withstand the pressures even up to 200 kg per centimeter square. In the most high pressure oxygen environment within a bomb, nitrogen present will be oxidized to nitric acid, sulfur present will be oxidized to sulfuric acid and chlorine present will be released as a mixture of chlorine and hydrochloric acid. So, these acids combine with the residual oxygen also which is present at high pressure and high temperature to form a corrosive vapor which can corrode ordinary metals. Therefore, the bomb must be made up of materials which will not corroded by these combustion products. Now, let us see how to measure this calorific value using this bomb calorimeter. So, the measurement of calorific value is done by burning a representative sample in a high pressure oxygen atmosphere within a metal pressure vessel which is called bomb. The energy released by the fuel on combustion is absorbed by non quantity of water surrounding the bomb which is placed in a bucket. The resulting rise in temperature of the water or absorbing medium is a direct measure of the heat generated in the combustion process and it is recorded. The heat of combustion of the sample is then calculated by multiplying the temperature rise in the calorimeter by a previously determined energy equivalent. How to estimate this calorific value? Before a material with a unknown heat of combustion is tested in a bomb calorimeter, the energy equivalent of water equivalent or the calorimeter is first determined. This value represents the sum of heat capacities of the components in the calorimeter that is metal bomb, the bucket and the water in the bucket. Since the exact amount of each of the metal used in the bomb and the bucket is difficult to determine and continually formed scaling, the heat transfer characteristic changes with use in energy equivalent are determined empirically at regular intervals of time. The energy equivalent are reported as water equivalent and is determined by burning a sample of standard material with a non heat of combustion under controlled operating condition. Normally benzoic acid is used as reference material because it burns completely in oxygen, it is not hygroscopic and is readily available in very pure form. The energy equivalent or the water equivalent or the calorific value of the sample can be determined by writing a heat balance equation over the bomb. The powdered material is converted into pellet by a pelletizing machine. Start with a so normally the uh, powdered material of the uh, fuel substance is used. You can also use liquid also, but me I am talking about the powdered material or the solid material. Along with the sample pellet, other components being used for placing the mat material in the bomb are, we have seen fuse wire for initiating the fire, paper for wrapping the pellet of the material and thread for tying the material in the paper. All this material contributes to the heat released during combustion process and suitable corrections for fuse wire, paper and thread are included in heat balance equation. 
So, the heat balance equation over the bohm is used for computing water equivalent and also the calorific value of unknown sample. It is Ws multiplied by Cvs plus Lw multiplied by Cvw plus Cvp multiplied by Wp plus Cvt multiplied by Lt is equal to W multiplied by Tf minus Ti. Verb Ws is the weight of the sample in gram. Cvs is the calorific value of sample in megajoule per kilogram. Lw is the length of the thread in centimeter. Cvw is the calorific value of wire that is megajoule per centimeter of wire. Cvt is the calorific value of thread that is megajoule per centimeter. Lt is the length of thread in centimeter. Cvp is the calorific value of paper that is megajoule per kilogram. Wp is the weight of paper. So, which is equal to Wtf minus Ti where W denotes the water equivalent of the all the uh, whether paper, thread and the wire. Then Tf is the final temperature of water and Ti is the initial temperature of water. So, this um, in case of the quantities of fused wire, thread and paper are kept constant. Here the both e energy equivalent and Cv of the test sample then we can rewrite it, the equation or it, uh, re, uh, rewrite or equation can be simplified as W multiplied by Tf minus Ti. Let us do a problem um, for the standard sample or you have to find out the energy equivalent using Bohm calorimeter for 1 gram of standard benzoic acid having a heat of combustion 26.45 megajoule per kilogram which produce a temperature rise of 2.58 degree Celsius. So, what is the solution? We have seen that Ws that is a sample weight multiplied by calorific value of the sample is equal to W that is the water equivalent multiplied by Tf minus Ti. Using this equation we can find out the energy equivalent of the calorimeter. So, you can substitute the, substitute the values weight of the benzoic acid is given as 1 gram. So, you convert that to kilogram. So, what is that 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 kilogram. Then what is the calorific value of benzoic acid given that is heat of combustion which is equal to 26.45 megajoule per kilogram. And the rise in temperature that is the difference in temperature that is Tf minus Ti is given as 2.58. Just simply substitute that you will get the value uh, that is you will get a value of W is equal to 10.25 kilojoule per degree Celsius. So, after the energy equivalent has been determined the calorimeter is ready for testing the fuel sample. The samples of non-weight are burned and the resultant temperature rise is measured and recorded. The amount of heat obtained from each sample is then determined by multiplying the observed temperature rise by the water equivalent or energy equivalent of the calorimeter. That is Ws multiplied by Cvs is equal to W multiplied by Tf minus Ti. Then by dividing this value by the weight of the sample, we obtain the calorific value of the sample on a unit weight basis. So, let us do another example. A fuel sample weighing 1.15 gram produced a temperature rise of 2.352 degrees Celsius in a Bohm calorimeter with an energy equivalent of 10.25 megajoule per degree Celsius. Now determine the gross heat of combustion. Let us start solving this problem. What is the weight of the sample? That is Ws which is equal to 1.15 gram. And the rise in temperature that is T of minus T i is given as 2.352 degree Celsius. Water equivalent is 10.25 kilojoule per Celsius that we have already calculated from the standard, uh, the uh, standard sample of benzoic acid. Now, W s multiplied by C V s is equal to W into T of minus T i. So, using this equation we can see that here only the unknown is C V s while other parameters are known. For example, you can substitute the values in this equation and see 1.150 multiplied by Cvs is equal to 10.25 multiplied by 2.352. So, if you solve this, you will get Cvs is equal to 20.96 kilogram per gram or 20.96 megajoule per kilogram. So, the calorific value of the biomass material is 20.96 megajoule per kilogram. The calorific value of fuels are generally reported on moisture free basis. Using the moisture content of the fuel and calorific value determined from the Bohm calorimeter, find out the calorific value on dry weight basing using 
this equation that is CVD is equal to CVW multiplied by 1, mi, 1 by 1 minus MF where CVD is the calorific value of fuel on dry weight basis, CVW calorific value of fuel on wet, base, wet basis which is determined by the bomb calorimeter. So, bomb calorimeter will give you only the fuel calorific value on the wet weight basis and MF is the moisture fraction in the fuel. So, let us do this example. A biomass fuel has 12 percent moisture and its gross calorific value determined from bomb calorimeter is 16 mega joule per kilogram. Now, determine its CV or the calorific value on dry weight basis. So, for solving this we have moisture content of biomass 12 percent. Therefore, the moisture fraction is 12 by 100 which is equal to 0 0.12. The calorific value of wet fuel is equal to 16 mega joule per kilogram. Now, our equation is CVD is equal to CVW multiplied by 1 by 1 minus MF. So, using this equation and substitute the values of CVW and MF, we can solve the CVD. And CVD is equal to 16 multiplied by 1 by 1 minus 0 0.12 and we will get 18.18 mega joule per kilogram. Therefore, the calorific value of biomass on dry weight basis is 18.18 mega joule per kilogram. Now, what is the effect of moisture on the heating value? During any of the thermal conversion process, a considerable part of heat is used to evaporate moisture which is never recovered in any practical situation and it is effective and an effective heating value of biomass gets reduced. This heat loss represents only the heat of evaporation of inherent and surface moisture and not the heat loss caused by evaporation of decomposition moisture. Therefore, if you use the higher heating value and make the necessary moisture correction, the resulting heating value is the net heating value. So, net heating value assumes that the, the water vapor is not completely condensed. The sink gas has a net calorific value of between 10 to 20 mega joule per Newton cubic meter and natural gas has an NCV of around 38 mega joule per Newton cubic meter. Now, you can find out the relationship between the net heating value and the moisture content. The net heating value and moisture content of the biomass can be correlated by this equation. The, in this equation, you will be uh, seeing CVN is equal to 1 minus MF multiplied by CVD minus lambda MF. Where MF, lambda MF, CVN and CVD are the latent heat of vaporization of water moisture fraction of biomass, heating value of wet and dry biomass respectively. Here, CVN is the net heating value which is in mega joule per kilogram, CVD is the heating value on dry weight basis which is mega joule per kilogram, MF is the moisture fraction of biomass, lambda is the latent heat of vaporization of water which is 2.26 mega joule per kilogram. In practice, the moisture content at which biomass combustion normally occurs or sustain is much lower and it is around 70 percent. So, for gasifier the optimum moisture content of biomass is 15 percent and higher moisture in biomass leads to poor gasifier performance. Also high moisture lowers the effective heating value of the biomass and it should be avoided while using as fuel in furnace. So, let us solve this problem. A biomass material has its gross higher calorific value and moisture content as 18 meg mega joule per kilogram and 15 percent respectively. Now, estimate its net calorific value. So, you have high gross, gross calorific ca value that is GCV and you have moisture content. So, for solving this we have moisture content 15 percent. So, moisture fraction MF is equal to 15 by 100 which is 0 0.15. The calorific value of fuel that is on wet feet basis that is your gross calorific value is 18 mega joule per kilogram. Now, substitute the values to the equation CVN is equal to 1 minus MF multiplied by CVD minus lambda MF. We will get CVN that is 1 minus 0 0.15 multiplied by 18 minus 2.26 multiplied by 0 0.15 we will get net calorific value as 14.96 mega joule per kilogram. Now, what is this lower heating value? Uh, the calorific value of a solid fuel is determined using standard bomb calorimeter, where known weight of biomass material is burnt in a constant volume bomb in presence of oxygen. It is a measure of heating value when combustion taking place at constant volume and water formed during combustion of the biomass is condensed. The latent heat of vaporization of water is also taken to account and this heating value is referred as higher heating value HCV or the gross heating value. We have already seen this. 
In almost all the thermochemical conversion devices such as furnace, cook stoves, gasifier, operation, uh, operation occurs at constant pressure and vapors of water formed during the combustion of fuel and also present in the fuel. Leave the device with flue gas without getting condensed. So, in all cases, the calorific value data obtained from Bohm calorimeter do not represent the amount of energy value available for thermal thermochemical conversion. So, a significant amount of energy is needed to vaporize the water and this energy is usually not recovered. Therefore, the energy that can be extracted from the fuel is less than most reported heating value data and that is the lower heating value or the net heating value. In order to avoid serious errors in dimensioning of thermochemical conversion devices and its economic assessment heating value of fuel at constant pressure and where latent heat of vaporization of water is not taken into account should be used. So, uh, the heating value under these conditions is known as lower heating value that is the net heating value. It is therefore, more appropriate that LCV should be used in preference to HCV for the energy and mass balance and other design and performance evaluation calculation for a thermochemical conversion device. We have already seen how the moisture and the heating value are related and how to calculate GCV or the how to calculate the um, heating value the lower heating value or the net heating value from the gross heating value and moisture is not. Now, let us see the estimation of lower heating value. Knowing the elemental analysis and lower heating value of the biomass, the lower heating value can be determined. It is normally between 10 to 15 percent lower as compared to higher heating value. The lower heating value can be linked with the higher heating value by the equation higher calorific value is equal to lower calorific value plus lambda w f plus expansion work, where lambda and w f are the latent heat of vaporization of water and weight fraction of water formed during combustion process, that is the weight of water per unit weight of biomass. Let us start with the stoichiometric formula. Stoichiometric formula gives the atomic composition of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in a biomass. Knowing the elemental analysis of a biomass, its stoichiometric formula can be determined. For any biomass, the stoichiometric formula is represented by C, H, X, O, Y, where X and Y are atomic ratios of hydrogen and oxygen and it can be determined as X is equal to H by C by 12, Y is equal to O by 16 divided by C by 12, where C is the weight percent of carbon in the fuel, H is the weight percent of hydrogen in the fuel, O is the weight percentage of oxygen in the fuel. So, X can be calculated as weight percentage of hydrogen divided by 1 by 12th of weight percent of carbon in the fuel. Y is equal to weight percent of oxygen. Multiple, uh, or 1 by 16th of the weight percent of oxygen in the fuel divided by 1 by 12th weight percent of carbon in the fuel. The typical stoichiometric formula for biomass is C H 1.4 O 0.6 and for coal is C H 0.9 O O 0.1. It is already standardized. Once we know the stoichiometric formula, the molecular weight the water formed during combustion, stoichiometric air fuel ratio and lower heat, heating value for a fuel or biomass can be determined. Now, the water formed during the combustion process. Let the combustion of biomass is represented as C H X O Y plus M multiplied by 0.21 oxygen plus 0.79 nitrogen gives carbon dioxide plus X by 2 water plus 0 0.79 into m nitrogen plus heat. In the uh, this above this formula shows that one molecule of biomass or one molecule of uh, this coal whatever it is, is if it is com under combustion that is n moles of the air that means it consists of 21 percent n moles of air means 21 percent is oxygen and 79 percent is nitrogen and it will give one mole molecule of carbon dioxide plus x by 2, um, x by 2 molecules of water then plus 0 0.79 mole multiplied by mo, uh, m nitrogen and heat. So, here the uh, air is assumed to have molecular molar composition of 21 percentage oxygen, 79 percentage nitrogen and m is the moles of air used per unit mole of the biomass. The value of m can be computed by writing oxygen balance. 
So, y plus 0 0.21 multiplied by 2 m is equal to 2 plus x by 2. If you substitute x and y, m is equal to 2 plus x by 2 minus y bracket close divided by 2 into 0 0.21. So, the quantity of water formed during combustion is estimated as x by 2 moles of water formed per unit mole of biomass used. So, to obtain the weight of water formed per unit weight of biomass multiply with mole weight of water and divide with mole weight of biomass that is x by 2 multiply by molecular weight of water divided by mole weight of biomass that is in kilogram water form divided by kilogram biomass. Now, see the volume expansion work it is given by W is equal to P delta V which is equal to NRT and it can be represented as NP minus NR multiplied by RT where N is NP minus NR that is number of moles of the product minus number of moles of the number of moles of the reactant and R is the universal gas constant which is 8.314 kilojoule per kilogram mole Kelvin and P pressure and T temperature in Kelvin and delta V is differential volume expansion. Now, substitute the values of this NP, NF, NP, NR, R and T in this equation, we can get the volume expansion work in megajoule per kilogram. Now, by substituting the values of WF expansion work and higher heating value in equation, the lower heating value of the biomass can be computed. That is, higher heating the higher calorific value is equal to lower calorific value plus lambda w f plus expansion work. Let us see an example. The elemental composition of a biomass material by weight that is carbon 50 percent, hydrogen 5 percent and oxygen 45 percent on moisture and ash free basis. If the calorific value of the material determined from Bohm calorimeter is 18 mega joule per kilogram. Now, determine the following uh, like stoichiometric formula weight of water formed during combustion of biomass and lower heating value on moisture and free moisture and ash free basis. So, first we will solve the stoichiometric formula. It is given that carbon 50 percent, hydrogen 5 percent and oxygen 45 percent. Let the stoichiometric formula of the biomass we have already seen that that is C H X O Y. Here X and Y are estimated. Here X is equal to H by C by 12 and if you substitute that x is equal to hydrogen it is 5 percent. So, 5 by 1, 5 by 1, 1 means carbon here uh, 5 by 1 multi divided by 50 by 12 which gives 1.2 and here y is oxygen O by 16 divided by C by 16 that is 1 by 16th of oxygen divided by 1 by 12th of carbon and we will get 0 point if you substitute the values of oxygen and carbon you will be getting 0.52. So, x and y is calculated. Now, substitute the values of x and y in the stoichiometric formula. Now, the stoichiometric formula of biomass is C is 1, H 1.2, oxygen it is 0.52 and the molecular weight of biomass will be you can calculate as per this equivalent weight 12 plus 1.2 plus 0.52 multiplied by 16 we will get 21.52. Now, what is the weight of water formed during the combustion of biomass? So, this biomass combustion reaction that is C H X O Y plus M 0 0.21 oxygen plus 0 0.79 nitrogen. We have seen this formula. It will give carbon dioxide 1 mole of carbon dioxide plus X by 2 mole of H 2 O plus 0 0.79 mole um, nitrogen and heat. And you substitute this here you will have the uh, stoichiometric formula you are having C H 1 by 2 oxygen 0 0.52 plus M 0 0.21 oxygen plus 0 0.79 nitrogen give you CO2 plus 0 0.6 H2O plus 0 0.79 M nitrogen. So, the weight of water formed during combustion is what is the formula X by 2 multiplied by molecular weight of water divided by molecular weight of biomass. So, that is 0 0.6 multiplied by 18 by 21.52 will give you 0 0.5 kilogram per kilogram of biomass. So, the weight of water formed during combustion of biomass in this problem is 0 0.5. Now, the third one is the uh, estimation of the lower heating value on moisture and ash free basis. So, the estimation of volume expansion work. So, y plus 0 0.21 in 2 m is equal to 2 plus x by 2. So, m is equal to 2 in 2 plus x by 2 minus y by 2 multiplied by 0 0.21 
and substituting the values of x and y uh, and the number of moles of air used per mole of biomass is 4.95. Uh, equation is W is equal to P delta V uh, where which is equal to N P minus N R R T and you can substitute the values of N P, N R T and R like N R is equal to 1 plus 0 0.6 plus 4.95 multiplied by 0 0.79 and you will get uh, here the N P is 4.95 and T uh, 298 kilo um, is Kelvin and the W is equal to by substituting these values we will get W is equal to 5.55 minus 51 minus 4.95 multiplied by 8.314 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 21.52 which will give you 0 0.0645 megajoule per kilo and the latent heat of vaporization of water is 2.26 megajoule per kilogram and we have the equation HCV is equal to LCV plus lambda WF plus expansion work. So, LCV by substituting these values LCV is equal to 18 minus 2.26 multiplied by 0 0.5 plus 0 0.0645 and you will get the um, this lower heating value of 16.8 megajoule per kilogram. So, to conclude Today we have seen that calorific value is the amount of heat liberated per unit mass of the fuel sample which is oxidized under ideal conditions. We have seen the units of calorific value in CGS, FPS and SI systems. We have seen uh, gross calorific value and net calorific value how they differ each other. Uh, in net calorific value we are assuming that uh, the water is not completely condensed or it is not uh, it is free from the other parts uh, other parts which is oxidized. And we have seen what are the factors affecting the calorific value of a fuel. It varies from the uh, substrates or the fuel used and we have seen uh, we have calculated the calorific value and we have seen that calorific value is measured by means of Bohm calorimeter and it has different parts and its different parts also we have seen. We have seen uh, how to calculate on wet weight, wet weight basis and we have seen that uh, how, uh, how this moisture affecting the calorific value. So, what is the need of this calorific value on the dry weight basis? We have seen or we have done some examples uh, to solve, we have solved the problems related with this and we have seen that how stoichiometric formula is made or prepared and how the water content or the water formed, the weight of the water formed in the combustion is calculated and we have seen the lower heating value, how it differ from high heating value and how can the lower heating value be calculated from the high heating value and the moisture fraction is known. Thank you.